Indiana Jones in space. It's a big idea and one that sounds like the coolest thing ever to most people. If you haven't been reading much of the recent canon comics, you might not know that there actually is the equivalent of an Indiana Jones in Star Wars. Well, with more sketchier morals and dangerous associates anyways. Her name is Dr. Chelly Lona Afra, rogue archaeologist and scoundrel. Known almost exclusively in comics, her stories are some fan favorites. Not only does she run into well-known characters, she also occasionally works for them and has a tendency to stab them in the back, too. Even if you're not keeping up with comics, Dr. Afra is a character totally worth knowing about. Hey everyone, my name is Emma Park, I'm a content creator here at Utini, and today I'll be going over everything you need to know about the amazing character that is Dr. Afra, as well as sharing some of the best comics and an audio drama to find her in. Personally, I have to say that Dr. Afra is one of my favorite characters from the Expanded Universe, so I can't wait to discuss all of her appearances in the EU thus far. Without any further delay, let's dive right into it. Dr. Afra's very first appearance comes in the 2015 Darth Vader series. We get to witness her stealing the triple zero matrix from a quarantine world. Darth Vader meets her here since he's met some of her more violent droid creations and is seeking her help. Specifically, Vader wants a droid army of his own since he is not in the best situation with the Emperor. During their first meeting, Aphra puts the matrix into a protocol droid body and thus, triple zero is born. Think C-3PO, but his polar murderous opposite. In Star Wars, you can't have C-3PO without R2-D2, and that comes in the form of BT-1. Again, think polar, murderous opposite. They both have an insatiable desire to kill, which is really quite weird to see. For Vader's droid army, they go to Geonosis to get the equipment to make the droids. They steal some equipment, and Aphra makes Vader his private droid army. Aphra also becomes sort of a private worker for Vader. When Vader was doing official Imperial work, he gave her plenty of tasks to keep busy, such as stealing credits from the Empire, finding a mortician on Naboo to investigate the death of a certain former queen of Naboo, and seeking out the location of the pilot who destroyed the Death Star. Vader ends up with control of Triple Zero and BT-1 by the end of this series. In the crossover event Vader Down, Aphra meets Vader at Rogus Voss. They go off in their own directions, and she lands her ship near an abandoned Jedi temple, where she sees Luke Skywalker and R2-D2. Aphra decides to paint Triple Zero gold to trick them into thinking he was C-3PO, which really is quite brilliant. He got close enough to Luke Skywalker to shock him. Aphra and her crew run into Han Solo and Chewbacca, and they end up in a firefight. After a lot of trickery and a standoff, the situation ends itself with Leia knocking Aphra out. In the Star Wars mainline from 2015, Leia and Sana Staros bring Aphra to Sunspot Prison, where the Rebels interrogated her for quite some time. Aphra's cell gets attacked from a type of assassin droid, but Leia and Sana save her. As it turned out, the prison was under attack, and Leia and Sana needed Aphra's help. After helping to secure the prison, Leia and Sana allow her to use an escape pod to leave. Back in the 2015 Darth Vader series, Aphra was found by Triple Zero, BT-1, who had been working for Darth Vader, and some of Vader's droids at the Cosmotanic Steps. Despite promising that she didn't reveal anything to the Rebels while at Sunspot Prison, she was brought to Darth Vader anyways. Before seeing Vader, though, some shenanigans ensue as they always do, and eventually Aphra is brought to meet Palpatine. After this meeting, Vader pushed Aphra out of an airlock, which Aphra always mentioned she was totally terrified about. But Triple Zero, BT-1, and Black Chrysanthemum rescue her, and she survives. In Dr. Aphra Volume 1, simply titled Aphra, Dr. Aphra discovers that she's no longer a doctor, so she can't sell artifacts for a good price because she essentially has no reputation to back it. She discovers that this debacle was all started by her father, who wants her to help out on a project. Blackmailed and stuck in a corner, Aphra decides that she has no other choice than to help her father. His goal? To further his studies on the Ordu Aspectu, which is an ancient Jedi-esque group. Aphra, her father, BT-1, Triple Zero, and Black Chrysanthemum all head to the Masasi Temple on Yavin 4. Since the Death Star had recently been destroyed, there was a huge Imperial presence. Black Chrysanthemum fought off the Imperials while Aphra's father inserted pieces of crystals into holes inside the chamber in the temple. The group run into Imperial Captain Magna Tolvin, but they all escape. Next, they go to the Citadel of Rur, where they find dead Jedi and Force Bridges. The Imperials follow them there and cause trouble. They head to the core and activate the computer, which claimed to be the leader of the Order of Spectu, Rur himself. After some conversation, Aphra takes the core crystal and escapes with her father and saves Tolvin in the process. 
Afra takes a fake core crystal to the quarantine world and keeps the real one for herself. In the crossover event, The Screaming Citadel, Afra finds Luke Skywalker on Horrocks 3 because she wants him to try to use the Force on the Ruhr crystal. He fails, and they opt to take it to the Queen of Cathatin. When they meet the Queen, instead of showing her the Ruhr crystal, Afra gives her Luke, which the Queen absolutely loved. Afra also told her of the Ruhr crystal. The Queen tried to make Luke use the Force, but to no avail. Afra and Luke try to make an escape, running into Leia, Han, and Sana in the process. The Queen interacted with the Ruhr crystal, essentially turning it on. After some zombie possessions, Aberson symbiote infestations, and Afra enduring some wisdom from Ruhr himself, everyone makes it off the planet despite some interesting and dangerous experiences. In Dr. Afra Volume 2, titled Dr. Afra and the Enormous Prophet, Afra sets up an auction for the Ruhr crystal, deciding it's of no use to her anymore. At the auction, she was showing everyone what it could do. Ruhr then took a new form in a droid, trying to murder Afra. Black Chrysanthemum shot this droid, and it was back to business. Afra listened to offers while Ruhr was essentially running free, taking over yet another droid. And because things weren't already chaotic enough, Darth Vader decides to show up. Turns out, Triple Zero and BT-1 notified him of Afra's presence, since they don't want her to be their master anymore. Who could blame him? Afra decides to free them anyways, and Vader battles Ruhr. During this battle, Afra escapes, and the Ruhr crystal is destroyed. In Dr. Afra Volume 3, titled Remastered, we catch up with the newly minted crime lord, Triple Zero. That's right, Triple Zero is now a crime lord, which is definitely not surprising for anyone. Afra is blackmailed by Triple Zero. She has to work for him, or else Darth Vader will know exactly where to find her. Her first mission under Triple Zero is to infiltrate the Sumilk Imperial base. Afra finds Captain Magna Tolvin and takes her hostage. When Afra's crew leaves, she stuns Tolvin instead of killing her, and leaves her. Afra's crew destroys the base. Triple Zero sends them on a few more errands in this volume, including a trip to Wat Tambor's base on Skako Minor, a side trip to a rebel flight school to capture Harris and Dula to use as leverage to get into an Imperial facility, and breaking into said Imperial facility. The goal for all of this? For Triple Zero to obtain his earliest memories of his first kill. How insane and psychotic is that? Dr. Afra Volume 4, titled The Catastrophe Con, takes us to the Akresker prison ship. Afra is part of the mandatory prison army as a soldier. To put it simply, this is not a nice place to be, not that any prison actually is. While she's on the ship, she sees a force ghost, which makes her want to get out of the prison even more. So, Afra does what she does best. She tries to be sneaky. She attempts to escape, but it doesn't work, and she gets interrogated by the Empire. She finds access to a transmitter and contacts Tolvin for help. Tolvin arrives to interrogate Afra, but really she's just there to break her out. While they're trying to escape, Sana Staros attacks them, and it turns out she was sent by Harris and Dula to get Afra. Afra follows the Force Ghost back to its source and finds that it is a type of fungus, namely Gundarvian hook spores. After yet another failed escape attempt, Afra's interrogation is intensified. She was presented to Bor Ifrium, which is the same species as Bor Gullet from Rogue One. After spilling information about the hook spores, the Empire decides to get rid of a Kresker altogether. However, there were no plans to get the prisoners off the ship, so her next escape plan had to work or she would die. After a prison riot, freezing the hook spores, and an appearance from Darth Vader, Afra escapes the prison before its destruction. However, it's revealed that there's a bomb in Triple Zero and Afra, forcing them to remain together, or else they'll just explode. Dr. Afra Volume 5, titled Worst Among Equals, focuses on Afra's mission to get the bombs in her and Triple Zero deactivated. So, they go to Milvane to find a specialized doctor. However, as always, trouble ensues, and both end up in the lower levels of the planet. There, they meet Vulana Clam and her quaver worm, Girdle. Turns out, the doctor they were looking for wasn't available, and that doctor's mentor wasn't on the planet either. The Empire and the local officials on Milvane start shooting at Afra and her associates. Hope seems to be lost. No doctors, they're surrounded by enemies, bombs are still in their bodies. Then, someone fires at Vulata, but Afra dives and takes the shot herself. She and Triple Zero then discover that the bombs are no longer functional, so now they can go their separate ways. In Dr. Afra Volume 6, titled Unspeakable Rebel Superweapon, Afra is acting as a sort of supervisor figure for Vulata. Vulata wants to do things with Afra, but Afra tends to be protective. While Afra and Vulata were finding an artifact, they were approached by rebels, led by Magna Tolvin. But Tolvin doesn't remember Afra because of her interaction with Bor Ifrium on the Akresker prison. The rebels were there for a superweapon called the Far Killer, which they wanted to use to kill the Emperor. 
Afra and Velada were given a chance to join the rebels, but they declined. Afra and Velada are found by Black Chrysanthemum, who revealed that he's working for the Imperial Minister of Propaganda, Patina Mar Mas Vor. Afra, Velada, and Black Chrysanthemum go back to the rebels to steal the Far Killer, which was facilitated by Tolvin. Afra then told the Empire about the weapon that she now has and the rebels' plan to kill the Emperor. She met with Vor and requested an Imperial pardon, enough money to pay her debt to Black Chrysanthemum, and a ship in return for the Far Killer. Vor accepts her terms. Then, Vor told them that she was using them to lure the rebels to steal back the weapon in order to finish the assassination. The volume ends with Vader arriving and murdering Vor. Dr. Afra Volume 7, titled A Rogue's End, focuses on Afra's work with the Empire on Project Swarm, which was the Empire's initiative to find the rebel base. Essentially, Afra's role was to archaeologically analyze potential base locations. Bulata was with her on this project. However, when they go to Ash Moon 1 to find a rebel base, she leaves Velada on the moon. Turns out there was no rebel base there either. Later, Vader sends Afra to help BT-1 and Triple Zero interrogate Afra's father. Afra doesn't want to see him harmed, so she convinces him to tell them what he knows of the Empire. The two went off to a new location that her father suspected for rebel activity. They were joined by Vader, who told them cruelly that one of them would have to be murdered. Her father volunteers, but then at the right moment, Tolvin and the rebels find the ship. On the rebel ship, Afra was trying to find information on the rebel base. Tolvin finds her, shoots her, and then they make up and end up sleeping together. Before Tolvin woke up, Afra discovered the location of the rebel base, Hoth. She sneaks out and leaves a message for Tolvin, Vulata, and her father. She meets Vader on Tython, where she uses trickery and hacks into Vader, delaying the probe droid's discovery of Hoth. Next, moving on to the current Dr. Afra series from 2020, it focuses on Afra and a new crew. This first volume, titled Fortune and Fate, focuses on the search for the Rings of Veil, which are said to give immortality and fortune. Each comes with a curse when worn on their own, but together they bring all of the benefits with none of the curses. This volume feels like it's straight out of Indiana Jones. As of the time of this recording, this is an ongoing series, and it's definitely worth keeping up with. Lastly, if you're more of an audiobook person, you're in luck. July 2020 brought us Dr. Afra, an audiobook original. It adapted Afra's adventures from the 2015 Darth Vader series and some of the Star Wars mainline from 2015. It isn't just a straight-up adaptation, though. Author Sarah Kuhn adds extra details and moments and frames the story in an extremely interesting way. That'll do it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed our guide to all things Dr. Afra. All of us at Utini certainly can't wait to see where this character pops up next. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our upcoming comics podcast starting in April called The Cosmic Force. It'll be live on YouTube every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern at youtube.com slash utini. We would be honored if you would join us. And speaking of YouTube, make sure you're subscribed to Utini with notifications on so you're the first to know when one of our shows go live or when we upload a new video. Can't get enough content from Utini? We've got a ton of amazing articles over at utini.com. Lastly, if you'd like to help Utini out more directly, visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash utini. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, may the Force be with you.